So good morning to everybody and you're most heartily welcome to this very special day in the My Mind calendar. My Mind is celebrating its 15th anniversary this year. We were in fact uh, 15 years old in June, but we put the event off because we had hoped to have a live event. But as things have worked out, we decided to be decisive and go for the online event while we were waiting for everybody to make plans, et cetera, et cetera. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Bronya O'Rourke. I'm head of communications with my mind, and I'm delighted to be associated with this event today. We have a lovely panel of speakers lined up for you who are going to touch on various aspects of my mind's history and hopefully my mind's growth and future. So uh, I would like to welcome also, uh, we have lots of staff uh, attending this morning and we also have some of our mental health professionals. They obviously won't all be able to attend because they are busy looking after my mind clients, uh, which is what they do so well. And I just very quickly uh, like to mention the speakers that we have on this morning. So we're delighted to be joined by Minister Mary Butler, TD, who is Minister for uh, Mental Health and Older People. And I'm especially delighted because I know the demands on her time are legend. And so it's great that she has had time to join us this morning. We're joined also by Tim Griffiths from Social Entrepreneurs Ireland, because as some of you will know, my mind is a social enterprise. And we're also joined by Dr. Philip Dodd from the HSC, who is clinical advisor, among other things, to the National Office of Suicide Prevention. We also have a couple of our own people and they can introduce themselves later on. And then I'm delighted also to welcome Lottie Lenars, who is one of our therapists, and Sylvia Ribeiro, who is one of our former clients. So hopefully it will be an interesting morning. We're scheduled to run for roughly an hour, but I've put in an hour and a 15 minutes because this being Ireland, God forbid anything, we're done to time. So I've given us a little bit of wriggle room there. So what I'd like to do as a starting point for people in particular who might not be hugely familiar with uh, my mind is I'm going to show uh, a little video, it's very short, and it will give you a flavor of my mind's work. So if you bear with me, it's less than two minutes long and hopefully it will work from an audio and a visual point of view. My Mind is working for a future where everyone is able to access timely and affordable mental health support when they need it. My Mind is a mental health not-for-profit which was founded in 2006 with a very clear mission in mind to make mental health services accessible and affordable for everyone. Our services have had a very positive impact on the mental health of our clients all over Ireland and beyond. How do we do this? In a number of ways. Firstly, we offered a tiered rate system based on a person's employment status. Therefore, we only charge affordable fees. So regardless of your employment status, you can afford to attend at my mind. Secondly, we also believe in making the service accessible. So from the initial call or contact, you usually won't have to wait more than 72 hours for an appointment. We provide face-to-face -face sessions, which take place in our network of centers in Cork, Dublin and Limerick. Since the beginning, we have also provided our services online and over the phone. This has had a very positive impact on the people who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. As we all know, that situation has had a damaging effect on people's mental health. Our services also impact very positively on the lives of our immigrant communities, as we provide our services in 15 languages. This means that we can make a real difference in the lives of immigrant populations all over the country. At present, my mind is providing an average of over 32,000 appointments per year to over 5,000 clients. We know from our clients that our services are having a real and lasting impact on them and their wider families and communities. My mind believes that mental health is just as important as physical health, and we believe that early intervention is essential in order to avoid more serious difficulties down the line. We are proud to be making a difference in our communities. 
So thank you for your attention. I hope there wasn't, a, I think there might have been a couple of glitches there, but that should certainly give you a very good idea for those who are not as familiar as many of us with My Minds Services. So without further ado, I'd like to get the proceedings underway and I'd like to call on the chairman of My Minds Board of Directors, Brian Mulvihill, to say a few words and he will then hand over to the minister. So good morning, Brian, and over to you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, it's great to see so many people have taken the time to join us uh, for this special event this morning. Uh, I usually, when I'm sitting on the other side, usually zoning out anytime I hear an uh, introduction to a chairman's address. So I promise I'll be brief. Um, as Grania mentioned, uh, my name is Brian Mulvihill, and I'm chair of My Minds Board since September 2020. Um, it's a great honour for me to have been involved with my mind as a member of the board since 2015 and to have taken on the chairperson's role since last year. I'm hugely proud of my mind's work and the real and meaningful difference which we make to people's lives on a daily basis. And above all, I guess I, I'm proud of the people that make that happen. As many of you, you know, my mind provides high quality mental health counselling services, which are easy to access and affordable for the individual. We're a multilingual service and there is no need for a GP referral, which means no waiting lists and quick intervention, which in many cases can be hugely important. Our model provides for discounted rates to those who are most in need of affordable mental health services, those who may not be in full employment, but who are in need of mental health support. At the core of my mind is the belief that everybody who needs access to mental health supports, particularly in the context of early intervention, should have access uh, to that support and in an efficient manner. Christian Feichardt, founder and CEO of My Mind, will speak shortly about the history of the organization and how we have grown and developed in the past 15 years, which is what we're here today to celebrate. However, just for a brief moment, I would like to focus on the more recent past and the challenges and opportunities that have been presented to us by COVID-19 pandemic. The past 18 months have been a very challenging time for all of us as individuals, as families, as organizations, and as communities. My Mind too faced certain challenges as the impact of COVID-19 pandemic became more evident. I'm pleased to say though, that through careful planning and great dedication and effort on the part of the, of the MyMind team, we were able to quickly address these challenges. And by May of 2020, had moved all of our counseling service, services to our online platform. In addition, a phone service has been available to those who did not have access to or did not wish to use online technologies. As the pandemic showed no signs of going away and people's mental health became ever more challenged, the need and demand for our services grew and 2020 became our busiest year to date with almost 36,000 appointments provided to over 5,000 clients. This represents growth of over 25% on the previous year. Over 9,000 of these appointments were provided through our Slauncher Care funded project, which provided free counseling services to those most affected by COVID-19, including those on the front line, those who had suffered bereavement or job loss, and, and those dealing with the increased burdens of stress and anxiety. All told, during 2020 and, 21, and 2021 to date, my mind services have positively impacted on many lives, helped to lift many burdens, and allow people a safe space online and face to face to promote mental health well being in a professional, insightful, and compassionate environment. The recent OECD EU Commission biannual report, Health at a Glance Europe 2020, shows the COVID 19 pandemic has increased the risk of development of various mental health conditions and particularly among young people and people in lower income groups. This means that my mind's work in providing affordable and accessible mental health counseling services has never been more important and will remain essential for many years to come as the fallout from the pandemic continues to be felt. Therefore, in my mind, we continue to target the gap between the public and private sectors by focusing on providing affordable and accessible mental health services within the community, bypassing the need for clinical referral, long waiting lists and high costs of services. It is now my great pleasure to hand over to Minister Mary Butler, TD, Minister for Mental Health and Older People, uh, who I'm delighted to say has joined us this morning. We know how busy she is and the demands on her time, and we are delighted that she has been able to make time for us this morning. Minister, Minister Butler, you're very welcome. Good morning, and I'd like to hand over to you uh, for, for uh, a few words. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Brian, and thank you for that warm invitation. And I was just struck when Gronia said similar that how busy I was but I was never going to refuse this invitation. Um, I, am, I am hugely supportive of the model of what my mind does. So this miracle school layer taught on all the time that shine you. So I'll start off with a little bit of Guelga because you deliver support in 15 different languages. But I recently visited um, Christian and Caesar and the team in Christchurch. And I was delighted to see firsthand 
the work that you do on the ground. And it was business as usual that day I was there. And actually, Christian pointed out to me at that particular week in time, they were providing support in 17 different languages. Um, they had increased by two, so I suppose that was the demand that was presented to you at the time. Christian, what an amazing 15 years. How did you think in 2006 that you would be here in 2021 delivering 4,000 counseling sessions a month, um, supporting people through, uh, you know, a pandemic that we will never forget in our living memory? So can I just say congratulations? You can be so proud of yourself because we are really proud of you. And well done to you, my mind, and all the team, all your counsellors, all your volunteers. You can be really, really proud of yourself today. Um, I suppose the focus this year is on meaningful and positive impact that my mind had on thousands of people and their mental health. I understand that 2020, no surprise, was my mind's busiest year to date with the delivery of 35,451 appointments. That's just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Demand increased further with approximately 4,000 counselling and psychotherapy appointments being delivered every month as of earlier this year. So thank you so much for what you have done to support people over the last 18 months and for the last 15 years. Access to mental health support is also enhanced through my mind's vision that everyone, as you've said, Brian, has quick and easy access to affordable mental health services. Since the pandemic started, absolutely everyone has had to experience lots of changes in their lives, which can bring on extra stress and anxiety, and especially emotional distress. Many have experienced low mood, loss of income, and even bereavement. And the ability to adapt your organization to respond to extra demand, enhance service offerings, and put in place new supports shows an openness to change and innovation that is commendable. In particular, I would like to acknowledge the service you provided free of charge to people who were directly affected by COVID-19, including those who had been bereaved, those who had lost their jobs, and frontline workers. I am aware that under the programme funded by Sloan Care, you have already delivered in excess of 17,000 appointments. We know that these early interventions provided by my mind can and do help address many, many difficulties in a person's life, wherever they are, and can prevent more serious problems arising in the future. This clearly aligns with our national health policy sharing the vision, which identifies mental health promotion, prevention, and early intervention as one of the key outcomes underpinning the policy. The effectiveness, the effectiveness of psychological and counselling support is also very well recognised. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, digital initiatives were rapidly enhanced through additional investment to enable services to meet not only the current demand, but new and emerging needs. Technology has aided the provision of online one-to-one -one counselling and group and peer supports delivered through a number of NGO partners. My mind has been of critical importance in the delivery of such supports, providing, as I said, free online counselling in 17 languages to people in communities nationwide. I must also say that I do promote and acknowledge the work of my mind at every opportunity I have. Overall, online activity has increased and there is capacity for upsurges in demand, including in the area of talk therapies, because we really don't know what we're facing for the next 24 months. I note from your annual report that your counselling services were provided to, between, to people between the ages of 7 to 71 in 2020. 7 to 71, that's, that's, that's quite alarming. 8,599 calls were answered. 17,383 emails replied to, and 2,058 live chats were reported last year. Given the year we have all had, it is not surprising to learn that 26% of all inquiries from people were suffering with anxiety. In the current climate, there is an increasing demand for psychological, therapeutic, and counselling services, and my mind delivers much needed support to individuals who are experiencing emotional difficulties and in need of mental health supports. Mental health remains an absolute priority for me. As part of Budget 21, I secured the largest mental health budget on record with over 1.1 billion. Much of this funding will be allocated to the provision of talking therapies through the work of new and existing mental health staff. And I can assure you that I'm fully committed to ensuring the allocation of additional development funding in mental health 
to further support, um, enhance support to 2022. And I've had several meetings in the last couple of weeks in relation to budget. To plan for the ongoing increasing need for mental health services and the demand for more holistic person-centered responses across the whole community, the refreshed national mental health policy sharing the vision was published in June 2020. Coming at a time when our world is rapidly changing, sharing the vision will play an essential role in shaping our responses to the challenges we face now and those that are to come and will further promote the significant recent developments in online mental health. As you know, the National Implementation and Monitoring Committee established to drive and oversee implementation of the policy is progressing well in its work. Of note, progress has also been made on the HSE Talking Therapies Model of Care, which launched in April 2020. Five demonstration sites are planned for CHOs 1, 5, 6, 7 and 8, and will promote accessibility, evidence-based and recovery-orientated talking therapies. While the talking therapies model of care focuses on, focuses on providing talk therapies to people attending specialist mental health services, it also makes reference to talking therapies in primary care and funded organizations. <clears throat> Other developments in talking therapies include the launch this week of the HSC, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, Training Program for Mental Health Staff. Last month, I announced the approval of 4 million to reduce the number of children and young people waiting over 12 months to access primary care psychology to be spent between September and December of this year. Work is progressing across all the CHOs on regional and local based initiatives, including the recruitment of new staff. Furthermore, the allocation of funding to develop a sustainable primary care psychology service in the longer term through the recruitment of additional staff is being discussed also as part of the estimates. The improvement of our out-of-hour services in communities across the country in line with share and division will also assist in ensuring people get the mental health support that they need when they need it. Recent developments have included the selection of Waterford and South Kilkenny in CHO5 as the first pilot for a crisis resolution team, so which will bring in place three crisis resolution teams in the country, but we need to do more. Also, work has started on a crisis house in Clamel this month and the progress of child and adolescent mental health services telehubs and the official opening of the community cafe in Galway last month are, have all to be acknowledged. Finally, it is good to see such a broad range of speakers lined up for today's event, and in particular, the voice of lived experience, how important that is. I would like to once again commend you for all your hard work and thank Christian and his team for their invitation to attend today. I have no doubt that your service will continue to help provide the support that is required by so many people. This is particularly important as we continue to address the challenges posed by COVID-19 and beyond. I would also like to give a big welcome to your new chairman, Brian, and congratulate my mind on 15 years of delivering an invaluable service. I wish you every success in the future, Christian, and all your team, and thank you again for what you have done. We were so lucky that you decided in 2016 that you were going to promote this model to support people with mental health illness and mental health challenges. And you will have my continuous support. So thank you very much. Minister, thank you so much for those really kind words. And it's, it's marvelous for all of us here this morning, staff, mental health professionals, members of the board to know that we have your support. And uh, we're, we're very proud of the level of engagement that you have with the portfolio. It's very heartwarming. So we thank you for that. So before I hand over to the next speaker, uh, a little message has come in all the way from New Zealand from somebody called Lorraine Mintz. And she's saying, I'm sure, Christian, you know Lorraine. She's saying, congratulations, Kay and the My Mind team from me here in New Zealand. I remember those early years so so well kia kaha so there you go i thought that coming in as it does all the way from new zealand deserves a little mention so without further ado and hoping we won't have any audio issues this morning i'd very much like to hand over to our colleague in the national office for suicide prevention dr philip dodd who kindly joins us this morning thank you philip and over to you uh, thanks indeed, uh, Gronya, and I'm hoping you can hear me loud and clear because I know we had some technical problems a little bit earlier. 
Um, thanks indeed for the invitation to attend today and it's really a, an exciting event to mark the 15th anniversary of the setting up of what is really a pivotal and key partner in the delivery of quality mental health services to our population. I'd like to acknowledge Minister Butler's presence um, and also her, her, her speech and, and Minister Butler is really doing a wonderful job in, in really providing very significant and diverse uh, support to the development of mental health services in Ireland. And maybe just to reflect briefly back on her speech, um, Minister Butler, thank you for emphasising the, 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 the work that the HSC has done to develop the model of care for talk therapies in our mental health services. And I think that really does demonstrate the HSC's commitment uh, to building on multidisciplinary approach to the, to the supports of our population and their mental health needs. And also uh, to emphasize the developments um, in the area of dialectical behavioral therapy. It's a very important therapeutic approach for a certain portion of our population. And through the recent investment from government and then through the HSE, we're, we're working to develop a national uh, training office so that we will grow our own expertise in dialectical behavioral therapy in Ireland. My own background is I'm a, a consultant psychiatrist, but I've also a very particular interest in psychotherapy and I work as clinical advisor in our National Office for Suicide Prevention. And I really am representing the HSE here and would really like to speak to some of the key aspects of the collaboration and partnership that the HSE has with my mind. And maybe just to, like our partnership is very diverse, but maybe just to focus in on two particular areas. The first area is, is obviously in, in the area of, of suicide prevention. So the HSE is particularly proud to have supported uh, the work of my mind and who, is, who have received funding support from the National Office for Suicide Prevention for many years now. This collaborative relationship has been incredibly important as it supports our cross-sectoral efforts to implement Connecting for Life, which as you know, is Ireland's national strategy to reduce suicide, for which my office, NOSP, has oversight and a leadership role. The work of my mind in providing readily accessible therapeutic support to people who are experiencing a wide variety of mental health difficulties is very important service offering as we plan and implement a whole range of mental health services in community and primary care settings in particular. Specifically, this service is very important in the ongoing implementation of our national strategy, both nationally but also at regional levels across our 17 local Connecting for Life action plans. Furthermore, as Minister Butler really emphasised, and your video also emphasised, the accessible nature of many of my mind's services. That's really key to our efforts to reach out to populations or priority groups or people who might be more vulnerable uh, to suicide, people who are at risk of suicide, or even just those who are more isolated or hard to reach. The participation of my mind at many different levels of our strategy implementation must be acknowledged here today. It's not just in service delivery, it's also in implementation and governance. For example, at a national level, my mind, through Christian's uh, work, fulfills a representative role on the Connecting for Life cross sectoral steering and implementation group, which is chaired by the Department of Health. As one of two NGO representatives on this national oversight group, my mind sits with high level representatives from government departments and key state agencies to support the implementation of Connecting for Life. And for that, we are really appreciative. The second key area of, of collaboration between the HSE um, and my mind is very much uh, related to our recent history, and that is obviously uh, the development of a psychosocial response to COVID 19. At the early stages of the pandemic in 2020, the HSC we're very clear and focused on developing a psychosocial response uh, to the emerging pandemic. And a project group was set up under the, the leadership of Anne O'Connor, the Chief Operations Officer of the HSC and Chair of the HSC's Integration, Integrated National Operations Hub. So really psychosocial supports were very much integrated in with the infection control, acute hospital and primary care responses that were so essential to the uh, immediate responses to the pandemic. And through this work, um, particular priority groups for psychosocial supports were identified, including people who were bereaved during the pandemic, healthcare workers who worked tirelessly during these times, and then also more vulnerable groups of the population. 
and mobilizing a psychosocial response to the pandemic during and as we are emerging from the pandemic would be impossible without leave, re leveraging the innovative and accessible support options that were already provided across our diverse NGO sector. So along with other NGO partners such as MyMind, we were able to successfully fast track new telehealth options, including innovative online text and phone therapeutic supports. For example, as the Minister has also referenced, we were pleased to subsidize along with Sloan to Care free online counseling through my mind for anyone who was impacted by the pandemic, be it increased anxiety, bereaved, or those or just some of us who were struggling with the ongoing stresses and strains of public health restrictions. Uh, since June 2020, over 17,000 free video and phone sessions have been provided by my mind as part of this scheme, with more capacity being allocated to the end of this year. So maybe looking to the future, Minister Butler referenced our new mental health policy. Um, so sharing the vision is our new 10-year mental health policy for everyone, which outlines a very ambitious whole system approach to the delivery of mental health services in our country. The success of sharing the vision over the next 10 years will hugely rely on improving the level of mental health services and supports provided as part of primary care in the community, close to where people need them most. Sharing the vision reminds us that mental health services should be accessible for all, not just geographically accessible, but provided at a time, in a setting, and in a culturally competent manner that makes access as easy and as straightforward as possible. That is why service providers such as my mind are such an important part of the diverse landscape of our mental health service offering and will remain a key partner as we continue on the implementation journey of sharing the vision. So just to close, again, congratulations to my mind, to, to the board, to Christian and all your staff on your 15th anniversary. But maybe just pausing briefly to particularly thank your counselling and therapist staff. We in NOSP, through the pandemic, had very frequent engagements with our NGO, NGO partners as we worked with you to try and tease out how we could, as a health service and as a critical NGO, um, group of partners, how we could work to adapt our, our, our therapeutic offerings. And we know that working under the public health restrictions, adapting your service offering and responding to the new emergent needs from those who come to you for support, they all presented huge day-to-day -day and organisational challenges. We know how difficult this has been. And I, and on behalf of the HSC, I would like to commend you, your therapists, your counsellors, for your tireless efforts during this time. I'd like to thank the board specifically and in the Brian Mulvihill as well. Uh, thanks indeed, Christian. Apologies. If I could just say, Philip is in the Department of Health and the fire alarm has just gone off. So I would imagine there's no way that Philip can continue his... It's, it's just speech. stopped, so <laughs> sorry, Minister. Uh, would Sir that a steward, Philip? You don't have to get out and <laughs> no. sure everybody out. And just It's actually just a fire drill. It goes off half 11 every Thursday, so apologies for the interruption. I was actually just thanking Christian. So probably, hopefully, Christian, you won't remember, you won't forget this particular uh, thanks. Um, and obviously, Gronia, thanks indeed for you. But I'd also like to maybe just highlight two particular colleagues in the HSC who I know you have a very close working relationship with, and that's Derek Chambers, our National Policy Implementation Lead, who works in HSC Mental Health Operations, and also Bree Casey, who is our NOSP National Program Manager, who specifically uh, works with our NGO partners and sector. So thanks indeed. Uh, for giving me this opportunity to represent the HSE's true appreciation of all the work that you do. Thanks indeed. Philip, thank you very much indeed. And we, we certainly, it'll be some time before we forget the contribution based on the alarm going off there. But we thank you so much. And on behalf of my mind, we are so grateful to the HSE for the support that we have received over the years. And for people who don't know, um, and Christian will be mentioning it uh, later on, it's already been mentioned, we got specific support for free um, appointments for people suffering from the difficulties of COVID. 
that project runs until at least the end of this year. So if there is anybody watching who might feel that they could do with some support, please pick up the phone, send an email. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. Now, before I hand over to our next speaker, who's anxiously awaiting, I'd just like to read out a couple of other nice messages we've received. So Mark and all the team from Charities Institute Ireland send their best congratulations to my mind on the occasion of the 15th anniversary. And we have also had some nice wishes from Ivan Kilmurray. Ivan is the CEO of Inner City Enterprise, and she has given great support to my mind down the years. And she would like to congratulate Christian and the whole team and is grateful for the work that we do and hope that it continues into the future, as indeed we all do. So without further ado, and hopefully Tim has no sirens ready to go off in the background, I'm now going to hand over to Tim Griffiths, who kindly joins us from Social Entrepreneurs Ireland. He's the CEO. Tim, you're very welcome and thank you for joining us and over to you. Thanks very much, Gwanya, and hopefully the arms do stay off. Um, it, it's a real privilege and an honour to be invited to speak today and to join in on the wonderful achievements that my mind can proudly look back on and celebrate over the last 15 years. Although I myself am only six months into my role at SEI, both my own personal relationship and SEI's relationship with my mind and Christian dates back to 2009. At the time, I was working in the advertising industry and was helping social entrepreneurs with my pro bono efforts. And it was through that connection that I first met Christian. He had come over to Ireland from Poland and through his interests in human nature and technology and his experiences with Google was already making waves in the world of social entrepreneurship. Indeed, it was also in 2009 that Christian first came into contact with Social Entrepreneurs Ireland when my mind made what we then called a level two awardee. At Social Entrepreneurs Ireland, we believe in the people who identify social problems in our society today, come up with a compelling solution to that problem, and then take the leap of commitment into bringing that social solution to life. Over the last 17 years, Social Entrepreneurs Ireland has supported more than 400 social entrepreneurs and witnessed the difference that they have made across the country. Many of the SEI alumni are leaders in the mental health space, including Pieta House and First Fortnight Festival. We have also supported the Men's Sheds movement, which has taken Ireland by storm over the last 10 years. Other social entrepreneurs that we have supported include Michael Kelly at Grow It Yourself and Dissolt Ward and Evie O'Brien at Food Cloud and Hugh Brennan at Akulon Housing. Christian and the team at My Mind stand tall amongst that group of social entrepreneurs who individually and collectively are reimagining and reshaping a better, more inclusive Ireland for us all to live in. We believe at SEI that we need the ambitious thinking and entrepreneurial endeavor to respond to the emerging challenges that we face in society. And sadly, for some, the pandemic has only accelerated and amplified the challenges that they face in Irish society today. For many of our disadvantaged people, the divide has become even greater over the last 18 months. We believe that we are the change that we seek, and it is the social entrepreneurs amongst us who are identifying the problems at source and driving a positive change agenda. Our commitment is to support the social entrepreneur at every step of their journey, through the hard times as well as the good. In 2021, we at Social Entrepreneurs Ireland will be directly supporting over 80 social entrepreneurs and their associated enterprises across the island of Ireland as we help them on their individual journeys. We, we help people in bringing their solutions to life and support them on every step of their journey. Christian and my mind are living examples of that, having progressed from that original level two awardee back in 2009 to being an elevator and impact awardee in 2011 and 2013 respectively, to today where we are proud to say that my mind are one of the three scales partners that SEI are currently supporting. Throughout that time, my mind has proven to be a socially driven and driven enterprise and has delivered real impact over the last 15 years. The close to 35,000 people that you have directly supported, not to mention their families and friends who, have indirectly, who you have indirectly supported too, will forever be grateful for the help and impact that you have had on their lives. Quite simply, Ireland and those of us who are lucky enough to call Ireland our home are far the richer for your endeavours. So thank you to Christian to all your team, 
your colleagues and trained psychotherapists for the positive influence you have had and will continue to have in our lives. Happy anniversary. Tim, thank you very much. And we're delighted that you weren't accompanied by the sound of sirens. So thank you for that. And thank you indeed for all the support that Social Entrepreneurs Ireland has given to my mind over the years. And I think uh, Christian would agree with me when we say we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you very much indeed for that. Before I hand over to Lottie Lenars, who is one of our uh, therapists, I would like to just give uh, another good wish. Uh, this is from Nick and the staff at Smarmore Castle Clinic, which is an addiction centre up in County Loud. And we've done some work with them and we held a joint webinar with them uh, a couple of months ago. So Nick, thank you for that. And he's congratulating my mind for all of the work that we've done. And obviously we all look forward to the next 15 years. So Lottie is very kindly going to talk a little bit about her experience as a psychologist and a psychotherapist with my mind. And obviously her name would suggest she is not a native born Irish person but she's, uh, we've adopted her. So over to you, Lottie, to give us some of your insights of working in my mind. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I'm, my name is Lotta. Um, I think I was asked by a colleague to speak today because it was a Monday morning and I, I was raving about how much I like my job here. And um, I said, that there's never a Monday morning I don't like to come, like I don't have that morning Monday morning feeling. I just genuinely like my job. Um, as as um, you know, as it was mentioned, I'm from Belgium. Um, I'm trained as a psychologist, as a family and couples therapist, and also as a trauma specialist. Um, and I only moved to, to Ireland uh, two years ago. Um, and I was delighted to immediately, when I moved, become a member of the My Mind team. Um, most and foremost, I, I felt like My Mind's values were very close to my own values of making mental health care uh, accessible to all. Um, I've loved every day of, of, of the past two years. I've really, I'm really passionate about my job and I really feel I can do my job well here. I get supported to just do my job. Um, I get to work with a wide variety and I think all of us get to work with a, a wide variety of clients, which is very nice, of course. I, I, because of my training, I get to see families, I get to see couples um, individually, like I get to see adults, but also children and, and adolescents. I get to practice my, my languages, so I get to, you know, uh, provide services in Dutch and French and English, so it's also, of course, very nice, and I think it helps people to get therapy in their mother uh, tongue, it's, it's, it's very nice, um, even though my mind targets mainly um, clients with, with, with mild to moderate uh, symptoms, I feel like me and many other um, mental health professionals here are trained and have the expertise to um, yeah, work with, with a wide variety of issues and, and different levels of, of, of severity. Like often people come in and they, um, they present with depressive or, or, or anxiety symptoms, but then when you work with them and we have the chance to work with them over a longer period of time, for example, what would come up would be a more uh, complex trauma background. And, and we have the opportunity to work uh, with that as well. Um, of course, I mean, it's been mentioned many times now, but the sliding scales um, makes that, you know, people who would normally not uh, be able to afford um, um, uh, health, mental health care, like, you know, even homeless people, like they, they, they can come in and they, we, can, we can help them out. No waiting lists were really literally a click away. So um, this is nice, of course, from the client's perspective, but also from a therapist's perspective, because we get to intervene quickly. Um, it doesn't linger. We get that like um, early intervention. It, it makes it um, also very nice for us. Um, so in short, I'm not gonna take up a lot of time because a lot of it has been said before, but I hope that you notice from my genuine uh, enthusiasm that I've, I really enjoy working for, for my mind. And that's, you know, it's, uh, I'm proud to be a member of this, of this team. So thank you. Lotta, thank you so much indeed. And I really appreciate it because I know you've just come from seeing a client and you're just going to see a client now very shortly. So I do really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. 
Um, and again, just in case I haven't already said that again, say that to everybody, uh, we do really appreciate you taking the time to involve yourself in this special event this morning. So I'd now like to hand over to uh, Sylvia Ribeiro. Sylvia is a former client. Um, and just for anybody watching, um, we would generally never ask clients who are in therapy currently to talk about their mind mind experience because that is something that is uh, very fresh and sensitive and it is important that people's privacy and confidentiality is respected at all times but Phil Sylvia is a former client and she's a, a terrific young woman and is very pleased I'm I'm pleased to say to talk about our services and the experience that she has had with us so Sylvia over to you Thank you so much, Grania, and thank you very much for inviting me to speak a little bit today. So I, my name is Sylvia, and I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience with my mind from the perspective of the service user. My experience was very, very positive. I discovered my mind back in 2019. I was in my third year of university, and I just had a lot going on. Uh, Full-time college, part-time working, living hand-to-mouth. I had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. And I was really, really anxious, like nearly to the point of quitting university. So I was having this conversation with a friend of mine. We're like, well, maybe we should see a therapist because he was kind of like in the same boat, really stressing out about everything, also contemplating quitting school. And um, we had heard about my mind. And I'm like, well, why don't we just go talk to a therapist? And he's like, well, isn't that for like people that have like mental illness? We're just a bit bummed out and anxious. And I'm just like, no, I think it's for anybody that's having difficulties with life. Um, anyway, he didn't go, but I did. And I was absolutely delighted to have done so um, because it really helped me to gain perspective on what I was dealing with and put small things into place every day that helped me get through the last year and a half of university. And then again, I used their service back in 2020 when I finished college and the pandemic, it was like six months into it. I was not able to find a job straight away. I was really suffering from depression, just being isolated because I'm a very social person. And everything about my life was just completely topsy-turvy. And again, being able to speak to somebody that has experience coaching people through difficulties of life was really, really helpful. And I just love the website as well, because you can see all the mental health professionals there and all of their specialties. It's really user-friendly. Another concern that I had was the difference between having face-to-face -face sessions versus online. I thought maybe something would be lost in the interpersonal communication, but I thought the online service was brilliant. And I felt like I was really, really helped by the service. And I would recommend anyone that has any kind of difficulty that they need somebody to talk to, absolutely use my mind. It's been fantastic. Thank you very much, Rania. Sylvia, you've said it all. Thank you so much. And I really do appreciate. Um, I have to confess to the, the viewers, I have imposed on Sylvia's goodwill on more than one occasion, because as you can see, she's a shining example of reaching out for help. And she made that very important point because there are so many levels of mental health problems that people think it's only if you're suffering from something that's very severe or very, very debilitating that you can reach out for help. And we're here to say that is not the case. If you're feeling a little bit anxious, if you're feeling a little bit stressed, and goodness knows who isn't in the times we've just been through, helping um, yourself by talking to another person is actually one of the easiest ways to feel better about yourself and uh, doing that with a qualified mental health professional uh, you just can't beat it so uh, thanks to everybody so far uh, I'm now going to hand over and I'd like to thank everybody for keeping to time because I have a little I have a little clicker board up over here that keeps making noises that you can't hear but we're spot on and I'm very grateful to everybody for that so without further ado, I would like to hand over to the founder and CEO of My Mind, Christian Fiekert. Uh, Christian has a few slides that he'd like to share with us just to show some of the growth and development of the organization. So Christian, whenever you're ready, 
over to you. Thank you very much, Gronia. And I'm I'm speechless, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was listening to to uh, to to all um, all the speeches, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm so happy, and uh, I'm I'm, I'm I, the, the the past few days were so there was so much reflection in the past uh, just just to look back in the number of uh, past past years but uh, yeah i'm i'm very very grateful to to be here and to um to to to, to run my mind and to see the the growth that 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 we see um so yeah i can i can only say at this beginning thank you very much for all your help all your support uh, over the past past number of years, um, I'm I'm so glad to see Minister Butler joining uh, our our call. I, I remember we had a few few weeks ago uh, our meeting here in Christchurch, where we are uh, actually here today, and it was a great great meeting. I, I think we discussed a lot of very important uh, matters and uh, how we can also bring. Uh, uh, accessible services to young people and uh, people with uh, eating disorders and uh, and, and many, many many other uh, mental health uh, difficulties so that's that's very very much where we stand as an organization to make uh, services counseling and psychotherapy services very very accessible I would like to say thanks to um, to, to Brian uh, from our board and to uh, to our Board, uh, board of Directors. Uh, I know that sometimes they have very hard time with me, uh, but that's normal, I suppose, to have this 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 hard moments. I would like to say big thanks to uh, Dr. Philip Dot for joining the the call. Uh, we really really appreciate uh, the work with HSE, and we we see um, the partnership with HSE as a, extremely important and very valuable and um, and uh, very strategic to to grow uh, access to, to mental health services in Ireland. So we're really grateful to uh, to 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 see you uh, with us today. And I would like to say a big thanks to Tim. Tim mentioned that we met uh, first time uh, many years ago. Yeah, and it was many years ago. Uh, and that was a very interesting journey as well for, for me to learn more from even the advertisement world. Uh, and now team is with uh, Social Entrepreneurs Island. We, we started um, our journey with uh, Social Entrepreneurs Island back in 2009. So it's already 12 years. Um, and, uh, and it's amazing, amazing journey. Um, that's great organization, giving uh, great support to uh, social entrepreneurs. Um, and it's not only financial, but, uh, but uh, also very important mentoring support, which is so, so crucial and important um, at, the, at the journey that can be a little bit lonely journey and also can be very, very difficult uh, for, um, for, social, for social entrepreneur. And I would like to say big thanks uh, to, to Lottie uh, for joining the, the, the call and uh, to all our therapists that are probably watching us at the moment. Uh, without you, our services uh, wouldn't be possible to, and we wouldn't be able to provide um, uh, our services to, uh, to clients. And, uh, and thanks, uh, Sylvia. Uh, for for joining the call uh, and uh, for continuing uh, supporting our our cause and uh, and spreading good words about uh, our organization that's that's very very important and uh, and actually uh, majority of our clients are coming because of the good word from um, friends and family members, which is so, so important. And I would like to say big thanks to Gronia for putting uh, all of this uh, together. I know that is very, very big effort to put um, this big webinar and to um, to, to, to discuss this with all our speakers and to make sure that everybody is on time and to run all the, the, the speeches. So, uh, so thank you very much for doing that. And I would like to say big thanks to, to uh, my team uh, for all the work that they do in the background. And sometimes this is not recognized uh, so often as, as we should. 
Uh, but I, I can only say a big, big thank you for all your all your work, guys. And normally we would have big cake, right? <laughs> Probably after all the speeches, we would have big cake. Yeah, unfortunately, we're still meeting uh, online, but I'm, I'm really hoping that the next uh, anniversaries we will have in a more social uh, environment with, uh, with some uh, smoothies and uh, coffee, tea and uh, and and, uh, and and cakes or, or cupcakes, <laughs> who knows? But uh, yeah, I, I prepared a couple of slides uh, just just um, just to celebrate um, this uh, important uh, event. So yeah, so it's uh, already fifteen years. It's hard to believe fifteen years. And uh, as I as I said, that was uh, unbelievable fifteen years. And uh, when I was uh, preparing this very short presentation, uh, uh, I had to go through uh, a lot of uh, annual reports just just to to, uh, to gather some of the of the of the data, and um, and then I saw a lot of uh, pictures, a lot of memories back. So it was very 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 nice actually to see uh, how we grow as an organization and where we are now and uh, where we're going to be in the, in the next uh, few years. Um, our vision as an organization is still very relevant. I was looking back even in our uh, uh, previous uh, annual reports and that's still very, very much valid vision that we, we are so attached for the, for the past 15 years and, uh, when, and where we want to be as an organization in the next 15 years. And we want to really provide uh, everyone with easy and timely access to affordable mental health services that are so important and uh, so important to, to have this timely access in the right moment. So then if we have the right moment, we can, we can rebuild our uh, coping skills uh, much faster and, um, and, 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 and be happy again. Yeah? And uh, we, we can pass all these bad days or, or bad, bad moments. This is just very, very small selection of pictures. <laughs> I realize how old I am now <laughs> and <laughs> how young I looked back in 2006, 2007. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really uh, very, very, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very nostalgic to, to look at the, the, the pictures and I couldn't put all the pictures together, but uh, yeah, the, the past number of years were so, so great. And, uh, and, and all uh, people that, uh, that I met through the journey and all the support that we receive as an organization was so, uh, so amazing. And there are so many amazing people out there. And that's what I like about Ireland that you can just simply ask for help and someone is there to, 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 to help. And, and most of the time is uh, like without something going, uh, giving back, which is so, so important and especially so important in not-for-profit sector and, and, and social, social entrepreneurs. So um, this is so important slide because I, I wanted to show you how, how we grew as an as a organization and where the potential is for us to, to go further. And, um, and I was so shocked how many appointments we provided to date uh, over the past 15 years. So that was uh, over 210,000 appointments, which is unbelievable number. And, uh, and how many clients we, we, we touched directly through our services. And that's almost 35,000 clients to date. So for the past 15 years, 35,000 clients use our, our services uh, directly. So that's so unbe um, unbelievable and so um, big, huge, huge number. And um, yeah, it, it's, just, just, just amazing to 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 see um, all the, the the impact today that we have. Our goal is very, very ambitious um, going forward in uh, into twenty twenty three. So that's our very much strategic goal, and we want to provide uh, as many as seventy thousand appointments per year. So as you can see, there's a huge grow uh, that is um, just. Uh, 
just going to happen in the next uh, few years. And then maybe, maybe by 2025, if we're going to keep growing and keep growing our services um, and keep providing uh, such a great level of uh, services, maybe by 2025, uh, we, we might be able to, uh, to uh, provide our services to as many as 18,000 clients per year, which would be uh, such a significant, significant number. But still, small drop in this big ocean of need. Uh, so we still need to remember that there is a lot of uh, people uh, willing to access uh, mental health services and uh, they're they, they, they looking for this access. So there is definitely huge scope uh, for growth uh, going, going for, forward. And again, this is very, very busy slide. I, I, I realized that. Um, and this is only very small snapshot of all the support that we receive over the, the, the past number of years. And um, again, I would probably spend uh, hours of uh, naming everybody who uh, helped us as an organization. Uh, but I'm so, so grateful to all the support that we received uh, over the past number of years. And, uh, and hopefully there is a number of years um, in front of us and, and we're going to, uh, to continue our, our work for the, for the next um, number of years. So um, my big, uh, big, big ask for you uh, who's watching uh, at the moment is um, if you know someone who is currently struggling uh, maybe with anxiety, stress, depression, or maybe they are very, very frustrated in kind of day-to-day -day, uh, situations, just mention to them that yeah, the organization like MyMind.org is out there and um, they can simply just go to a website MyMind.org, click Get Started, and see someone within 72 hours. So it's so simple like that. And we want, to, uh, we want to provide this simplicity. We want to be very accessible and very uh, quick, easy to access organization. And we want to be at the end, um, go to service for most clients in early stages of, uh, of mental health difficulties. So again, thank you very much for all the support, all the work um, that we, we, we've done for over the, the, the past uh, 15 years. I'm really grateful and, um, and uh, yeah, that was amazing, amazing 15 years. And uh, I'm very, very proud and very, very delighted. So thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Christian. So before we finish up, uh, just a couple of other messages in. Uh, the minister had to fly off because she was doing the doll a couple of minutes ago. So she congratulations to us all again, massive achievement and wishes us all uh, the very best. And then we also had one of our own mental health professionals, Agapi, and lovely to hear from you. She says, congratulations to my mind. She's happy and proud to be part of the team. And then I also have a message from Lydia Redmond. It's incredible to see how far my mind uh, has come and how many people have supported, uh, we have supported over the years. Well done to all the team and to Kieran. Austin, who Philip, you know, Kieran. Uh, congrats to all the team at My Mind for all your work and achievements over the years, and thanks a million for that, Kieran. And then um, another person, uh, Elisa. I can't see the surname. She has had to rush off, but she's really looking forward to the next celebration and especially to the cupcakes. So you're on a promise now for that, Christian, for the next uh, for the next outing. And Ashling Murphy finally. Uh, who is with the Smarmore Castle a practice sends her very best wishes to us all. So as all of you will have been notified as you entered the webinar, it has been recorded. 
Uh, we will do a small bit of editing, but we're going to leave in the sirens and the lights flashing and everything, because I think that adds to the whole interest of it. Um, but as soon as it's ready, we will be putting it on our YouTube site and uh, Zoom will send you an email to that. So if there's anything in particular that you want to look back at, um, you're more than welcome to do so. So again, before we finish up, I would like to sincerely thank all our speakers, because I know everybody is very busy, even in time of online events, getting involved in different things. And we very much appreciate your time in our celebration this morning. In her absence, again, I'd like to thank the minister. I would especially like on my own behalf to thank members of our team who have worked tirelessly with me over the last couple of weeks doing practice runs and practice runs and practice runs and they'll probably never speak to me again after today but it was all worth it because I think it all went swimmingly well and we look forward to the next 15 years and thank you all so much everybody for taking part we wish you well please don't be alone with anxiety depression stress and worry please reach out to my mind. We're here for you and we look forward to being of assistance. So thank you very much again to everybody and I wish you all a very good day from us all here at My Mind. Mm -hmm.